So um, we had a question from a couple people saying, how do you deal with crouching medium kick drive rush? So let's take a look at that. I think this goes without saying, but in order to beat crouching medium kick drive rush, the most important thing to do is not to get hit by crouching medium kick in the first place. So just trying to stay outside of its range. So just generally knowing how far your opponent's crouching medium kick goes and where you can stand to avoid it. One of the most important things you have to understand in Street Fighter is your hurt box when you're standing is different than when you're crouching. So if you see here, I'm standing, it doesn't hit me, but if I crouch, here, that this distance doesn't hit me, but if I crouch, boom, it hits me. So your hurt box actually extends a little bit forward when you're crouching versus when you're standing. That's why you'll see a lot of really good top level players like the Daigos, like the Menas, or like the Punks. They kind of do this a lot in neutral because your hurt box is actually less out forward than it would be if you're crouching. So if you're trying to beat crouching medium kick drive rush, one of the most important things to do is just kind of like have the confidence to be able to stand and walk in and out of this crouching medium kick range. It takes a lot of practice. It's hard to do. You're going to get your toes clipped a lot while you're practicing this, but don't always crouch guard because if you stand, you know, you can whiff punish them. But yeah, that's something really important to know. So you don't always have to like walk in and crouch. Now, blocking a crouching medium kick isn't the worst thing in the world. However, blocking this does suck because now you're in a mix-up situation. Yes, it costs three bar of drive from the opponent, but it does put you in a situation where you really just have to guess. So what can we do if we do, unfortunately, block this crouching medium kick drive rush well there are a couple things we can do the first thing is just knowing your general defensive options there's generally two attack patterns an opponent can do after crouching medium kick drive rush they can go for a gapless attack string or they can go for an attack string that does have a gap and i'm going to show you the difference between a gapless string and a string with a gap so i'm going to record akuma doing crouching medium kick drive rush crouching light punch all right, do you see my hands? I actually took my hands off the controller and I stopped holding guard or block, whatever, after the first crouching medium kick. That's because this, the way the frame advantage works, you can actually let go of the controller and you'll still be able to block because there's no gap in between that sequence of crouching medium kick, drive rush cancel, crouching light punch. In this situation, you can push anything you want. You're not gonna get anything out, right? There's nothing you can do to kind of get hit in that situation. And your opponent can't get hit by you. Even if I do something like mash, sure you can, it doesn't come out. Because there is no gap. So what you're going to want to do in this situation is just to block. And then what your opponent can do after the crouching jab, let's check Akuma's frames. So Akuma's plus three, which is a lot. You're going to have to understand what you can do after that. And generally you have like three-ish options. Option number one. If you really want, you can drive reversal. That's going to be in your favor. There are ways they can bait that out if they're smart about it, but that's generally like a kind of safe way to deal with crouchy medium kick drive rush, especially if you're not in like higher MR master rank. So if you're anywhere in like gold, platinum, diamond, doing drive reversal against crouchy medium kick drive rush is kind of a good idea because most people don't have the counterplay to that labbed out so you can try that then the next thing you can do is you can do a delayed throw tech so what a lot of people do after this they'll go for a throw because if i just block throw works and the other thing is if i block this jab and i mash light punch because the opponent's plus three i'm gonna get counter hit you see that there let's try that again see i got counter hit because i push, tried to push jab Jab is four frames startup, Akuma is plus three, which means we add three frames to my four, which essentially makes it a three, a seven frame startup, right? And throws are five frames, which means five is less than seven, so the throw is always going to win in this situation. So after this, if Akuma decides to throw, I can't push a button. And if Akuma decides to go for a frame trap, I can't push a button either. So a throw will beat me pushing buttons and a frame trap will also push beat me pushing buttons and it'll beat me pushing throw right away too. So I can't really push a button immediately in that situation. So you shouldn't be doing that because you are minus three. What you can do instead is do delayed buttons. So either a delayed throw, which is called delayed throw tech, 
or you can do a delayed jab. And I'm going to show you what both of those look like and why they work. So let's say I record Akuma doing this. And I do a delayed throw tech, which means I just delay my throw a little bit. I don't push it as soon as I can. I wait a few frames and then I throw. If you look in this game, you don't actually have to press throw the second it hits you. You can hit it a few frames later. It's hard to do at 50% speed. Let me try to show you. See, I pushed throw after his hands came out. That's a delayed throw tech. Escaping the throw near the end of the breakable frames of the throw. So why is delayed throw tech important? Because if you do a delayed throw tech, you're also going to be able to block immediate attacks from your opponent. There, I pushed throw late, but this attack, this frame trap, hits me before the throw does. So I can kind of defend against both. Like this. So if you're really struggling against frame trap and throw mix up from crouchy medium kick, try adding a delayed throw tech to your game because it's going to help you defend against both of those. The downside of doing a delayed throw tech, which I'm sure we all know, is the shimmy. And I've said this like a million times before on my stream, but let's see what it looks like. There, the opponent walks back a second, expecting you to do a delayed throw, gets out of your throw range, sees you whiff the throw, and then punishes you for it. So as good as delayed throw tech is, it's not without its risks, and you're going to need a punish counter combo for this, and it's going to do a, like, truckload of damage. The damage you're going to take for getting shimmied is way more than the damage you're going to take for eating a throw uh, mid-screen. In the corner, the risk reward becomes skewed a little bit because characters do have throw loops, so you have to be careful of that. But generally mid-screen, eating the throw is way better than eating the shimmy. So you gotta be careful with that. Then, if you think your opponent is going to shimmy, there's something else you can do. You can just do crouching medium kick or like crouching medium punch. And I'll show you what it looks like. There. Because in order for your opponent to shimmy, they have to walk backwards. So here what you can do, you can try to clip their legs and kind of create your own offense. So that'll be people who are shimming, and even if they only shimmy a little bit and block low and don't push a button, you still get like blocked drive rush pressure. This is what it would look like in a match. So you're trying to like create an offense and go like that. So that works too. So retaliating with something like this is a way to beat people who are trying to shimmy you while kind of taking your turn back in a really forceful kind of expensive way. The issue with this, obviously, you will lose to the frame trap, right? So if people are frame trapping you, that's going to lose to that. So it does have risk as well. It's not foolproof, so you have to be careful. But that is something you can do to beat people who are trying to shimmy you. Then last, we have the delayed jab or fuzzy jab. So let's say people are doing something like this. They go for it and they kind of like walk up and throw. What you can do is... You can do a delay jab, not right away. Delay your jab, jab just a little bit. And what you're going to do is you're going to do crouching jab into like crouching medium punch because you should get a counter combo if you time this properly to beat their walk up throw. And then you get that kind of stuff. So fuzzy jab, delay jab is also a really good way to beat people who are trying to go like jab, throw after their dry rush pressure. So those are basically your options on defense and that's how you can kind of uh, beat or at least have better defense against people who are doing gapless strings from crouching medium kick into drive rush. Now the second thing your opponent can do is instead of going for a gapless pressure, they can go for a pressure with a gap. So something like this. Now this, if I let go of guard, I do get hit because there is a gap between the drive rush and the standing hard punch. So if I mash out Shoryuken during the string. I can protect against it. So one thing that you should do if you have a invulnerable reversal that uses drive bar, after you block the crouching medium kick into drive rush, just buffer in a Shoryuken. Because if they go for gapless pressure, it'll come out automatically. Let's see. Then if they go for gapless pressure, so here we go. Slot one, gap pressure. Slot two, gapless pressure. So my DP didn't come out. Didn't come out. There. The one time the dummy did, the one with gap pressure, my sure you can came out. So if you do have a character like this during pressure, try to buffer in a sure you can because that'll stop your opponent. Now you might be wondering why would they ever do gapless pressure? 
Well, that's because they might notice that after you block a crouching medium kick drive rush, you're always blocking. So a really good way to beat people who are always blocking after this is to actually do drive rush into immediate throw. Because you're going to be blocking and you're not going to be doing a throw tech. But in this situation, if you input your Shoryuken, it'll beat the throw. So here I have all three set. Gapless. Whoops, I mistimed it. Gapless. There, he probably went for a throw because I got the counter hit message. So that'll be people going for throw. So doing that is really, really good. If you don't have an invulnerable reversal that doesn't use meter, life becomes a little bit harder against gapless pressure and you just kind of have to guess, unfortunately. You could always do a delayed throw tech here as well. That'll work. You can also do two delayed throw techs. There, this way if he goes for the throw in the beginning or if he goes for the throw after the jab. Let me re-record this. There, that'll beat that. That'll beat that. That'll beat that too. So practicing this stuff in training mode will really help you. It's not really fun to practice this because there's basically a, like a rhythmic timing based thing. But if you're not practicing this, then you're never going to get better at um, defending against crouching medium kick drive rush. So spend some time in training mode. What I rec recommend is spending like maybe two or three minutes doing this every single time you get into training mode and it'll really help you out against crouching medium kick pressure. In slot one, I recommend recording Akuma doing crouching medium kick, drive rush, crouching light punch, throw. Like that. Then in slot two, do gap pressure, crouching medium kick, drive rush, standing hard punch. Then slot three, same thing, but instead of standing hard punch, you're going to do throw. So then what you're basically going to do is you're going to turn on one and practice your delayed throw attack. Then turn on slot two and you're going to practice your buffer DP. Then turn them both on and make sure your DP only comes out on the gap string. Okay, that's fine. Okay, good, it did. Now the next step is to buffer a DP and add a delayed throw tech. There. There you go, that's what you want. And you just wanna practice this for about two or three minutes every time you play before you start getting into the game. And that's gonna help you out so much against defense. Then you can just play with adding things like delayed jab, adding a shimmy recording and then practicing your coaching medium kick into drive rush pressure kind of thing and everything I talked about in the beginning of this video mix and match with your recording settings add as many different variations as you can and try to lab each of your defensive options that I listed in this video to help you defend against characters who are doing constant coaching medium kick drive rush pressure. I hope that helped you guys understand some things you can do to defend against crouching medium kick pressure. It is really strong in this game, but it's just a fact of the matter that that's really how this game is played. So whether you like it or not, you're going to have to learn how to deal with this because I don't think it's going anywhere in Street Fighter 6. But if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel because this helped me as a content creator. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and until next time, take care.